Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Can you, can you guys hear me in the back? Yeah, thumbs up. All right. Well, I appreciate everyone coming out tonight uh, for our senior night and also our college career military fair. Uh, this is such a, a valuable meeting. And, you know, first of all, I want to thank Mrs. Vickers for uh, putting this together, as well as, as Jasmine Young, who's our career coach. Uh, Heather Miles is here. Uh, and then, of course, we have Mr. Boy, our, our senior administrator and also senior sponsor. Uh, Mrs. Vickers is also one of our senior sponsors. And so we've got a great team of people who collaborate together to put this program together for everyone tonight. Uh, such valuable information uh, to share. And so we appreciate you coming out and your, attentive, your attentiveness, your attention to the detail that will be shared tonight because there is quite a few important items that we want to focus on. Uh, it's really a three-part meeting. So this is really important. You know, we start with a focus on student services and what we provide for our students and for our seniors and what's got them to this point, but also what they need to do to finish and to finish strong. And then, of course, we want to talk about our senior events and important dates and things that you need to know. And then, of course, we'll finish up with the last part of our meeting. We have some, uh, some friends from University of Montevallo here to talk more specifically about our seniors and their pathways and the opportunities that they have at the college level. Uh, and then we'll move forward into our, our fair and be able to visit with uh, a plethora of college representatives, military representatives, and career uh, and organizational people who are here tonight. So a lot of great information to share with you all. Uh, and so without further ado, I want to say again, thank you for being here. I'm Wesley Hester. I'm the principal here at the high school. And uh, this is always a very fun event, uh, an exciting event for our seniors and all of you parents, family members who are here. And so again, thank you for being here tonight. And we'll go ahead and get our program started. Good evening, I'm Pam Vickers. I am one of the senior sponsors, as Dr. Hester mentioned, and also the college counselor. I've had the privilege of already meeting with a number of you, um, both parents and students, about your college plans. Um, Ms. Young has met with uh, a number of you regarding your career plans. And so today we want to just put everything together and give you some plans moving forward. If you haven't started your search, you don't know what you want to do uh, with uh, your uh, your yourself after high school, then uh, we're going to give you some steps to think about and some plans going forward. Our student services staff uh, consist of a number of people that you have gotten to know over the years since your time here at Thompson. Uh, our freshman counselor is Ms. Stanley Jenkins. She's actually back with us after a year away, uh, and we're glad to have her back with our freshmen. Dr. Mosley uh, is handling uh, sophomores. Ms. Tracy McGee, who is a senior parent this year, but also is our junior counselor. Uh, Ms. Marsha Roach is our interventionist. Uh, Ms. Dennis, our registrar, and Ms. Hicks is our student services assistant. Uh, Dr. Hester mentioned uh, Ms. Miles earlier. She is our senior counselor. She and I work very, very closely on a number of things, planning the senior year and helping you be uh, successful and ready to go after graduation. Ms. Miles, if you'll just stand so everyone will know you. And then Ms. Jasmine Young is our career coach. And Ms. Young, if you'll wave, she'll be up here in just a few minutes. Before we get to graduation day, there's work to be done. And you have been working on this path for four years now. And um, it, it bears repeating that in order to get your diploma, you have to pass all of your core subjects. Uh, four years of English, science, history, and math, plus all the required electives for a diploma. 
we have three diploma endorsements. So we have one Alabama high school diploma with three different endorsements. One is a standard endorsement that requires 24 credits. One is an advanced endorsement that requires 26 credits, those credits being including Algebra two with Trig, one foreign language credit, and two semesters of any AP or dual enrollment course. And then our um, highest diploma track is the Advanced with Honors endorsement. That also is 26 credits. It requires pre-calculus or higher math, chemistry, two credits of the same foreign language, so Spanish 1, Spanish 2, ASL 1, ASL 2, French 1, French 2, or similar, and six semesters or three full years of AP and dual enrollment credit. So you can, um, you can combine that. So some people take a couple of years of AP and a, and a year of dual enrollment or whatever the case may be, but you have to have six total semesters of AP or, or dual enrollment. In order, in order to be considered a valedictorian or a salutatorian, you must have, you must be pursuing that highest diploma endorsement. The one with the two years of foreign language, the pre-cal, the um, six semesters of, of AP or dual enrollment, and chemistry. We announce valedictorians and salutatorians usually in early February, and that's after the first semester of grades have been posted to the transcript. So if you're on the bubble one way or the other, maybe you are a salutatorian now, almost on the verge of being a valedictorian, you have one more opportunity at the end of the semester uh, to get your grade point average where it needs to be. So to be a valedictorian, you have to have a 4.0 GPA or higher. That's not a 3.9999, that is a 4.0 or higher. And then for a salutatorian, it requires a 3.8 to 3.99, so if you have a 3.7999, unfortunately that's not salutatorian status. So um, if you have any questions about that, you certainly can message me at any time and I'll be happy to answer, it, answer your questions. But valedictorians and salutatorians receive a medallion that they wear during the graduation ceremony and that medallion is presented on senior honors night and we'll talk about honors night in just a minute. We have quite a number of honor cords and stoles that are awarded from a plethora of honor societies and organizations here at Thompson. I've printed just a few of these. You'll get a copy of this presentation in your email um, later this week, so you don't have to feel like you have to write down everything unless you just want to. You're going to get a copy of this. But these are uh, the uh, cords and the stoles that are awarded um, at this time. Those are all awarded on Honors Night again in May. And the club sponsors will coordinate this process. I have parents oftentimes who will call me and they'll say, hey, I need to make sure I've paid for a cord. I need to make sure that my child is on track to get the cord. Um, many of the organizations, when you pay to join them, you also pay for the cord. For example, in Beta Club and in Honor Society, if you've been um, inducted and you receive and you maintain that status, you'll get that honor on Honors Night. Other organizations, Mu Alpha Theta and some of the others, collect the money in the spring. And there'll be multiple announcements made about that. There'll be multiple ways of communication so that you do not miss the opportunity to get what you have earned. I'm gonna give you a few college application tips. And then we actually have uh, one of our college partners here from the University of Montevallo that is going to add two some of those uh, tips, but these are just some things that are pretty standard regardless of where you plan to apply and what you plan to do, um, things that you might want to know. Um, you, if you have not already, you might want to go ahead and create a professional email address, maybe something with your name and your date of birth and Gmail, not something that is uh, trendy or a catchy saying, something with your name that's professional. Uh, when my children, I have two boys who are Thompson graduates, when they came through here, they created um, an email account, a new one, and we only sent college and career information to that email. It's easy to get um, your email mixed in with everything else you have going on, and uh, it's nice to have a, a clean new email account that you can use, and you know that when you check that, it's likely something that you need to pay attention to because um, that's all that you're sending. You're not sending coupons from Chick-fil-A or the like. You're only sending your college or career uh, related 
items to that. We will participate in College Application Week in October. That is a statewide initiative. It'll be held October 18th through 22nd. And that is a time when most, if not all, the state colleges and, and universities and some in surrounding uh, states will waive their application fee for one week only. So that's a great time for students who have not already applied or maybe you have applied and you really wouldn't mind just, you know, seeing what else is out there. It's a great time to be able to uh, submit your applications. You will hear all about College Application Week from me leading up to that event. We'll have some activities and things that week to promote uh, the week. Many application deadlines for colleges are, November, are December 1st or earlier. So please be mindful of that. Um, I have students all the time who come in and they say, am I too late? Have I, I feel like I'm late in the process. You're not late, you're right on time. So if you haven't already started applying, right now is the time to start thinking about that and getting ready uh, to submit all of those important admissions documents. But by December 1st, many colleges and universities will have scholarship deadlines. And if you uh, miss it, then you might miss out on money. I tell this story every year. I have a student um, that comes to mind at, from a previous school where I was also counselor. And he had a, a 32, I believe, on the ACT. He was also the quarterback of our football team again, at a different school, not here. And he was so busy with football season that he just said, you know what, he kept saying, I'll wait to apply, I'll wait to apply, I'll wait to apply. He waited until Christmas holidays to apply and he missed out on a full scholarship to the college of his choice, all because he didn't follow the, the deadlines in spite of everyone trying to tell him to. You guys know that fall semester is really busy and I know we have a lot of um, athletes, we have a lot of people who are in color guard and band and different things in the, in the room, and this year flies by, especially the fall. So make sure you're paying attention to those deadlines. Many schools, uh, oh, let me mention that I will be listed as your counselor on all of your college applications. Even though, yes, Ms. Miles is your senior counselor, for anything college admission related, please list my name and my email address because I'll be handling that paperwork process. If you accidentally um, list Ms. Miles, she's gonna contact you and say, hey, Ms. Mick, Ms. Vickers handles that. So just go ahead and just put that in your mind that uh, Ms. Vickers will be handling anything. If you think about it, anything that happens after high school and if there's something going on during high school um, or class related or so forth here, then Ms. Miles will help you. Many schools offer application fee waivers if you qualify for free or reduced price lunch. There was an email that went out a few days ago encouraging people who had not already to complete um, your free and reduced application. Um, if you don't have that on file and, but you qualify for free and reduced lunch, I can't write a fee waiver for you. So it's very, very important if you qualify for that based on your income that you complete that process with our child nutrition department and let me get that into our records. Um, for example, at the University of Alabama alone, a fee waiver will pay your application fee, which is probably, I think it's $40. It will pay your freshman enrollment deposit, which is $150, and it'll pay a $300 housing, depart, uh, housing fee allowance. So you do save quite a bit of money if you qualify for those fee waivers says order a transcript, you click on that button, you create an account if you haven't already, it takes just a couple of minutes, and um, you can request your transcript to be sent anywhere you want to, to yourself, um, to a scholarship organization, to a potential employer, or to a college. Um, it's a great service, there's a great tracking mechanism so that um, we don't have to worry about the, the U.S. Postal Service anymore getting things there uh, in a timely manner. When we hit submit or process on the transcript, it's there and the college has it or whoever you have it. And it really, really expedites what we uh, are trying to do to help you to meet your deadlines. There's no cost. Um, we used to have a charge for transcripts. You now pay a technology fee with your school fees, and that is just one of the many things that um, students benefit from uh, is not having to pay for those individual transcript requests anymore. We no longer include 
ACT or SAT scores on your transcript. That was at the advice of the Alabama State Department of Education about two or three years ago. And we actually rode that for as long as we could and uh, were advised to, to stop. And the reason for that is we don't always get test scores uh, results in a timely manner. You often have them before we do. And students were saying, wait, you didn't include my latest scores. Well, we didn't have them to include. And now we know why the state advised us not to do that. Um, so we're no longer including test scores on your transcript. Make sure if you are taking the ACT that you're taking advantage of the four or more, depending on, um, depending on the, the test, um, opportunities you have to include those colleges where you might want your scores to be sent. I used to work at a college, at a four-year university. I'll tell you, I worked at the University of Alabama. We did not care what you made on the ACT until it came time for your transcript. So if you take the test four times and your three of your four scores you're not really happy with, they're always going to look for your highest one. So please don't feel that they're going to judge you based on what your scores are. Those scores are going to sit in a file until they have a complete application ready for you. So if you have any questions about that or concerns, please feel free to, to contact me. But um, don't forget to put your ACT scores, uh, to put your colleges down whenever you register to test. And then, I know many of our English classes have already completed this or they're about to. Uh, you will need a resume if you don't have one already. I do not write a recommendation letter for a student without a resume because there are so many things that you can tell me about yourself and honors and activities and um, accomplishments that you've been part of since ninth grade that you can list on a, on a resume uh, that I may not know about you. And so anytime you ask someone to write a letter of recommendation for you, always give, present them uh, with a resume uh, when they do it. It makes, it makes recommendation writing so much easier for those of us who do that regularly. If you are an athlete who plans to play a sport at the collegiate level, uh, there are two eligibility portals that you must um, register with. One is the NCAA. Most of you are, have heard of the NCAA before. The other is the NAIA. Depending on where you plan to go to college, um, Division I schools typically use the NCAA, and then the NAIA tends to be for Division II and Division III. But you will need to register uh, with the, it's called the Clearinghouse and you'll need to register. That process is entirely online. There's a fee of around $90 that you must pay in order for your activation of your account to begin. And again, if you receive free or reduced lunch uh, or you have a substantial um, financial need, I realize in the last um, couple of years, uh, things have happened that you maybe wouldn't have otherwise qualified, but maybe now you do in your situation. Have that conversation with me and let me see if there's something I can do to help you. Um, but that is, like I said, I do have to have something in writing from you in order to, um, to give you the fee waiver, to grant the fee waiver. Uh, once you've registered with the Clearinghouse, I will send your current transcript. I will upload it directly to a portal. And again, once I upload it, they have it right then. We're not dealing with the mail. And um, then I'll upload it again after graduation. So when I upload that transcript, I want you to be ready to. I want you to be ready to go. I want you to be Division One eligible because if you're Division One eligible, you can play anywhere. Okay, so that should be your goal. To be Division One eligible, you have to have a 2.3 GPA or higher. And I have students all the time who say, "Oh, yeah, I definitely have that. I've got a 3.0." Well, when you look at just the classes that the NCAA or the NAIA consider, everyone's grade point average takes a drop because they're only looking at your English, your math, your history, your science, and certain electives like foreign language, creative writing, or mythology literature. So you don't get the benefit of your health, your driver's ed, your PE, uh, your office aid, anything that you would typically do very well in comes out of play. So your GPA can take a little bit of a, a tumble um, if you're only considering those. I like to be a part of that process when a student is registering. And before we complete that registration, I like to have a conversation with you so that you know going in where you stand. And if you have questions or you want to sit down and talk to me about your potential eligibility or where you stand or where you need to be to become eligible, um, then I welcome those conversations. 
And then if you're interested in the military, this is a family decision. Uh, we have recruiters from all branches of the armed forces on campus throughout the year. We have se several that will be here this evening. And you'll need to take the ASVAB uh, at some point. That is um, an aptitude battery test that is given for uh, military consideration. The ASVAB also has a career explorations component to it. If you've never taken the ASVAB and you're looking for um, something that will give you a little bit of idea about careers, the ASVAB might be of interest to you, but you must take it if you're considering the military. We will usually give it here in the early spring, and it's given at most every military recruiting office in the area. There are ROTC programs and National Guard programs that offer college scholarships for college. After you graduate, if you're in the military, you do have a commitment um, of four to six years of military service um, to have your college paid for, so forth. And again, uh, we do have recruiters here at the fair this evening, but if in the future you decide you want to speak with someone, please contact me. Okay, so now we're gonna talk briefly about some of the important senior dates coming up. Um, Ms. Wayman is the yearbook sponsor, and she left some materials down on the on the um, orchestra pit area. When you're leaving to go to the career, to the college fair, college and career fair, there are some things that you might want to pick up. If you haven't had your senior portrait made with Iron City Studios, we are no longer using um, Belmont, we're using Iron City. If you haven't had your senior portrait made, please schedule that as soon as possible. And there's uh, a black postcard uh, down below that gives you that information. And um, the deadline to be in the yearbook is December 10th. So make sure that you, and they, they service a lot of schools, so make sure you get your name on their schedule sooner than later if you have not yet had your senior portrait made. You also have until December 10th to place a senior ad for the yearbook. So parents, if that's something that you want to do, um, then, then know that that time is creeping up. There are some postcards down below uh, that you can pick up that tell you a little bit more about the senior ad process, and Ms. Wayman will be your contact for that should you have any questions. She also has developed two QR co codes. If you want to purchase a yearbook this evening, she has a QR code that you can use to purchase it, and then I think another one for the senior ad sale itself. We have a new provider of caps and gowns. We don't have new faces. It's the same faces that we've always used, but Balfour, our Balfour representatives are now Herf Jones representatives. That really doesn't mean anything any different for us. It's still going to be uh, a quality product and uh, that you've come to expect and we've come to expect. But they will actually be here on November 1st. You'll get an announcement ahead of time. They'll come and they'll do a presentation and they'll talk about the cap and gown ordering process. It's a little over $100 to get your cap, gown, diploma, dated stole, and your tassel. And they'll talk to you about that. They also have quite a bit of additional um, merchandise for sale, t-shirts um, and water bottles and keychains and extra tassels and so forth that you can purchase um, if you wish. You may not borrow a cap and gown from a previous graduate. That has always been our policy and will remain so. We have a couple of um, activities that we are bringing back. We're so happy um, to have some flexibility and we will be bringing back, as we did last year, our Parade of Graduates, which is where we go to the different schools, uh, the feeder schools, and um, in our caps and gowns, in your caps and gowns, I must say. And um, we'll have a full day there, a half day of fun there. And you'll also get your cap and gown that day. You won't get your tassels and your medallions and so forth. That will be a little bit later during honors night, but you will get your cap and gown that day. Senior honors night is always at the Thursday before graduation. So this year that, become, that date is Thursday, May 19th. And that's again when you'll get your honor cords. Scholarships will be announced um, from different colleges and then there'll also be additional scholarships awarded that day. Our senior breakfast um, and our student-led senior day program and our graduation rehearsal will be on Monday, May 23rd. Um, when I came here from a previous school, um, I 
pitched a, an idea of doing uh, table decorations, having parents participate in the senior breakfast process initially by having you come in and do a tablescape or a centerpiece. Um, and that has been something that we have enjoyed um, until COVID. And so we're glad this year to be able to bring that process back. It is, I, I, as a parent myself of two Thompson graduates, it sort of felt like one last thing that I could do for my, for my kids and their friends. So there's usually uh, several band tables, there's a cheer table, maybe there's a wrestling table, there's all kinds of things. But the one thing that I want to say and I want to go on record is that no student is left out of that process. So while we invite parents to come and decorate those tables, every student has a place to sit and every student has a table decorated, whether your parents are able to do that or not. So that's very important. That's the only way I would agree to do a senior breakfast the way that we do it, is to make sure that it is all inclusive and we want everyone to be a part of it. It really is probably one of the most ev emotional events that we have outside of graduation itself. And some may even say, it's right, right there with graduation. It's a fun day. And uh, you'll be getting more information about that in January. We typically have parents come in on that Sunday afternoon to do the decorating, and you'll get all the details about that. And then graduation day, the long-awaited day, is Tuesday, May 24th at 6 p.m. And I'm gonna let Dr. Hester uh, elaborate a little bit on some of these plans and um, then I'll come back up with some final remarks on my portion. Before I elaborate, again, I just want to thank uh, Mrs. Vickers for sharing uh, uh, this important information that we have uh, available for our, our seniors and our parents. And, and what, again, what uh, a, a great opportunity, uh, a lot of great information to be shared. Uh, the senior events and dates, uh, a lot to take in and a lot to think about. And so you may have noticed that uh, a couple of the items that she mentioned about the breakfast, the senior program, uh, and then of course the graduation rehearsal was listed on one day, which is May um, the 23rd, which is a Monday, okay? We also mentioned that we have the opportunity to bring our traditional programs and our activities back into full play. And our disposition this year is different than it was last year or even the year before, where things were kind of closed down and we were trying to get open back up, you know, due to COVID protocols and all of that. Well, we have the opportunity this year to have a disposition of we are open and the world is open around us, including our partners that we have always used, traditionally used, which includes uh, our friends at the Harbert Center in Birmingham and also the University uh, of Alabama at Birmingham with Bartow Arena. And so our plans are to get back to that which is where we first started. And here's why. Because of when we talk about graduation, we talk about the ability to accommodate a number of people, family members, etc. Okay, over the past couple of years with graduation itself, we have utilized Warrior Stadium, which has been very nice for us, and it has accommodated us very well under, underneath the circumstances that we've been faced with. But the limitations of tickets plus the event of or the possibility of weather has always come into play and has always been a concern for us. Fortunately, the past couple of years, graduation has, we've been blessed with nice weather, uh, and that has uh, allowed us to have very nice graduation ceremonies. But it takes only one weather event, one rainy day, one stormy day, to take us from, oh, that was really nice, to, gosh, that was just terrible, okay? So we don't want to take those chances with weather. But the main reason that we want to move back to Bartow Arena which is where we have been in years past for years, is because of the number of tickets that we can allow for our seniors, okay? And that is so important for us. It's important for our school. It's important for our school system that we're able to provide a sufficient or more sufficient amount of tickets and to accommodate our families at our event. Plus, we can carry on with the event as planned and as scheduled regardless of what the weather situation may be. 
Okay, so that's the reason that we want to get back to uh, Bartow Arena in terms of our graduation ceremony, which is on the 24th of May, on Tuesday. On Monday the 23rd, we will have that senior breakfast. It is scheduled for the Harbert Center, which is very closely located to Bartow Arena, which is when our rehearsal will be traditionally right after we have our senior breakfast and our senior program. Uh, so we want to get back to that. We have the opportunity to get back to that because things have opened back up. University of Alabama at Birmingham, uh, they work with us to schedule those programs again there. Now, I will say, disclaimer, all of that is going to be dictated by and the circumstances surrounding COVID, the numbers, and that's going to dictate whether or not we are able to pull that off. And we are very optimistic that we will be able to. But in case that we don't, I think that we also have our school, our school system has the track record of certainly being able to accommodate and to call an audible at the last minute in order to make it a very nice ceremony. And of course, we always have our facilities here that we can utilize if we need to, if we need to. But again, that also means that we have to lessen the numbers and lessen the number of tickets that we have. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to compromise that. So that is why we have made plans to move back uh, to Bartow Arena for our graduation ceremony and also uh, with our senior breakfast just because of the proximity and the convenience of having it in Birmingham. And it's always been such a special event for our seniors and our families in the past with the breakfast, with the rehearsal, and then of course with the graduation ceremony itself. So I just wanted to explain that and to provide you the information that you were probably looking for is like, where's it gonna be? Why is it going to be here? Well, that's why. And, and also just to let you know that we live in a world now that you know changes on a dime, on a moment's notice. But we're prepared for that and we have a plan for that. And we will certainly not compromise the level of quality of experience for our seniors in these events and activities. We will find a way and, and make it happen. If, if at all possible, we will do that. My portion by just uh, giving you some ways to stay in touch. Uh, with a class of 500 plus students, the easiest way for us to communicate with you will be through email. And so you'll hear from me uh, with scholarship opportunities, with information about college application week, with graduation reminders and so forth. You'll hear that um, largely by email. So make sure that you are students, you are checking your ACS student email every day. And typically when I send something uh, pertaining to graduation, pertaining, pertaining to big deadlines with colleges, I always include parents on that because I realize that um, you're sort of like the agents for your kids, so you kind of want to know what's going on too. And so uh, make sure that we have your correct email. If you hear of an email that's gone out and you say, well, I didn't get that. Uh, make sure that you're touching base with the school, uh, with Ms. Dennis, our registrar, to make sure we're using the same email that you've given us during the online registration process. So if you've changed that, we have no way of knowing it unless you tell us. Periodically, we may mail information to you. We don't do that quite as much anymore, but there may be an occasion to mail uh, maybe a, um, an honor society induction letter or something like that. Make sure we have your current address if you move because that always happens. Someone moves and then we don't have that information from them, from you. And if you have anything, any questions about school, something you hear tonight, your senior year, we are always your best sources of information. We have a wonderful parent um, led Facebook page for the class of 2022, but I can tell you over the years being parts of those pages, accurate information is not always shared on Facebook. It's, you know, for the most part it is, but please don't make Facebook your first point of contact to say, I wonder what we need to do on this situation. Call me, email me, um, stop by. I want to be able to help you and I want to be able to answer your questions and I want to respond to you as quickly as I can with an answer that, that is truthful. So please make sure that you're reaching out if you have questions. Um, I'm one of the senior sponsors. My email address here is here. And then Mr. Brad Boy um, is a second sponsor. I believe he might have already gone to the fair. 
um, portion of the event to get ready for that, but you have our email addresses, and he's also the 12th grade administrator. So if you have something that concerns you or a question that you have, please feel free to reach out to us um, anytime. All right, I am going to introduce um, Ms. Jasmine Young. She's going to come up and talk to you about career planning. Hi. <laughs> I am Jasmine Young, and I am the career coach here at Thompson High School. What I do, I help your students figure out what you guys want to be when you grow up. Yes, that's me. And as exciting and also scary as that can be, it is also refreshing when you have assistance, and I am willing to help and able. All right. So we start with career planning. The career planning process is a very essential component here at um, Thompson High School. Students are expected to be college and career ready when you graduate, and that is our purpose. Our main objective is to help you find a career path that fits your interests and academic experience. So even though you are going to college, it is great to come down and talk with me. We can go through some assessments. We can talk through your plans or your ideas to make sure that you are on track and to make sure what type of possible majors that you can go into. If you know that college is not on your radar and you want to go to work, that's absolutely fantastic. We can talk about what you're good at, your skills, and what type of opportunities are out there for you. All students have the opportunity, as I stated, to explore your interests, your abilities, your values, and skills, and goals through a series of those assessments. With career advising, it's not testing. We would discover clear objectives, um, create personalized career plans, and ultimately reach career goals for college um, or those entering the workforce. I have some career planning tips here. What you could actually do, and what is very smart to do early, is learn about yourself. Understand what you like, what you don't like, what you're good at, what you're not good at, and what you see yourself doing every day versus not seeing yourself do every day. Identify you know, possible um, careers based off of those things. Do your research. It is very important for you to do your part. We have a lot of resources out there that are free and that are accurate and that are very helpful that can help you. Take advantage of experiential learning. So that's volunteering, that's internships, that's being active in your um, career academies here. And if you're able to receive any type of certifications, do that now because it makes you more competitive in the world of work and also against other individuals. Start building your professional re um, portfolio. What I mean by that is start creating your resume if you have not already done so. I do know that a lot of you will actually be doing that soon. If you need assistance, I'm willing to help you as well. Um, learn how to network. Not just learning how to talk, but how to network and build those relationships that can help you. Um, be a professional in your conversation, in your emails, learning how to email in a very professional way as well. Master your soft employability skills. I like to, to call them transferable skills that can be used in any type of environment, any type of setting. And then if you need assistance, contact me and I'll be willing to help you. Life after high school. So these are three questions that you can um, you know, think about and try to create your responses. Um, what do you want to be when you grow up? How many of you guys know what you want to be when you grow up? No? No one? OK. Are we working on it? So I, I guess a lot of people need to come and see me tomorrow. <laughs> it's never too early to start thinking about your future. And what are you doing in high school that is going to help you or have an impact in your future? All right? And I want to leave you with a few steps. Learn about yourself, good and bad. Learn about careers. Make a plan and let's be successful. Again, my name is Jasmine Young. I am the career coach here at Thompson High School and I'm happy to work with each and every one of you. We want each of you to walk across the stage at graduation with a plan and do well, all right? Next, I am going to introduce our university partners, Ms. Haley Smith and Ms. Kim Miller from the University of Montevallo.
I do want to say that it's really awesome that you have access to a career development office here on campus. Not every high school offers that for their students. I really want to encourage you to take advantage of that, especially if you don't know what you want to do post-graduation. Uh, some of the tips that I want to give you when you get ready to start looking at applying for colleges is get a list of your top schools, whether that's a top five or maybe it's a top two. Uh, then I want you, and I, I'm encouraging you, to get on those campuses, check it out, put your feet on the ground, and see if that's something that you actually want to do, if you want to be there, if you want to study uh, at that program that they offer. All schools in the state are pretty much back doing in-person visits. Um, now, a lot of those schools have altered the way that they structure those visits because of COVID. Um, some schools do single family visits, some do up to three, some do group settings. Um, so definitely reach out to those admissions office or those campus visit offices um, and schedule those visits. Uh, the next thing that I did want to mention earlier, uh, Ms. Vickers had mentioned uh, setting up a student email account to reach out to those colleges. If you choose to uh, use a Gmail, make sure that you're checking your spam folder. For some reason, over the last two years, a lot of colleges, uh, their emails have wound up in the junk in the spam files in your Gmail. Um, and we have students reach out to us all the time, hey, I don't know if I've received a scholarship yet, can you let me know? And we try to respond back to those students, and sometimes those do wind up in spam. So make sure that you are checking those out because we want to get all that information to you. Um, and then one of the last things that I want to leave you with is definitely reach out to your admissions office. Uh, each school here in the state of Alabama has a representative within their office that is assigned to a certain territory within the state of Alabama. Uh, the people that are here tonight that are going to be over at the career and uh, college fair. Uh, those people are more than likely going to be representatives. They're going to be your main contact point whenever you're going through the admissions process at these institutions. Um, don't ever feel like you are bothering us, sending too many emails. Uh, we get paid to help you through this process and we definitely want to make this as easy as possible as we can for you. Uh, we have a lot of first gen students that come through and it can be a little scary sometimes. So we want to make sure that you're knowledgeable, you've got all the information that you need, and we don't want you to feel nervous throughout this process. Um, a lot of institutions also utilize a texting application, so if emailing your admissions counselor isn't the easiest way of communication for you, feel free to text us. We're definitely here to help you in any way we can. Uh, if you have any questions at all, please ask away tonight at the career fair. We all want to make sure that we're answering all the questions that you have, whether that's about a department, um, maybe it's a scholarship. I know Ms. Vickers mentioned scholarship deadlines earlier. Um, every institution scholarship deadline is very different. We don't all function on the same, wa same wavelength. Uh, so that's why it's important to, as it was stated earlier, do your research, make sure that you're finding out those deadlines, uh, what is required for those scholarships. Uh, now, I know that y'all had talked about doing resumes. Definitely uh, look into getting at least one to three recommendation letters as well. Um, some scholarships do require those. Um, and then uh, not all scholarships are awarded through an application process. Some of those are awarded just solely based off of your ACT and or high school transcripts. Um, and then the last thing that I want to state is make sure that you're looking at the admissions requirements for each institution. A lot of institutions have gone test optional due to COVID, um, so definitely check that out. Some of them do super score as well. Um, if you don't know what super scoring is, that's when you take the ACT or SAT multiple times and we combine your highest sub scores to create a super score that can benefit you not only in admissions but sometimes in scholarships. So again, those can be different, different institutions, but make sure that you're contacting your admissions counselor and you're asking all of those questions. So if you need anything tonight, please feel free to stop by any of the tables. Thank you. Kim Miller from the University of Montebello as well, and I am from the student aid office. Last but not least, everyone wants to hear about financial aid, right? I know that's what you're here for. Um, I do have just a few minutes, so my uh, presentation will be just brief and touching on just the basics of what's going to be going on in kind of a timeline format. And a couple of the slides look a little more full, so if you want to take a quick picture or know that they're going to be out there for you later, um, just some information that I believe is just really important, so I wanted to include. Um, but this year, with the new seniors, so congratulations to you and your parents, that's a big deal. 
Um, yay! Yeah. So if this is your first time in, in the process of financial aid, you will be applying for the FAFSA, which is your free application for federal student aid. And I go ahead and say renewal and submission because from this year forward, you're going to do this uh, same application as a renewal all throughout college. So remember, you're going to do it as we're getting ready to head to school, but each year thereafter, you're going to also renew that FAFSA. All right, where do we apply for FAFSA? Um, if some of you are on the same age length as me, I remember some paper applications, but everything's online. And even better for folks who prefer to do uh, this information more through their smartphone, you can either choose to go to the website that I've listed, and that's certainly just fine and still working, but also there is a federal student aid app and we have tested it for the last couple of two to three years now and it works great just as well so if you prefer to use your smartphone either option is just fine okay when it's time to do this fast i sort of did this in a q a session because these are mostly the questions we hear and when do i need to file my fafsa i put the date at the bottom of this slide it's october 1 coming up we just get you started back to school and now we're talking about heading to college and filing that application for federal aid and it feels so early but on October 1 that portal opens and we encourage you to file that FAFSA online as early as possible and it really doesn't take that long and they're streamlining it so it's pretty cut and dried and again it's coming up October 1 and we do want to um, resubmit each year. I'm sorry I just realized my mask was still up. All right, what information will it take to submit that FAFSA for you parents and uh, you students that work and earn income? We will be moving off of the 2020 tax information year. So that's not the taxes we just completed, that's back a year and it's information that you should still have and already and available and basically you'll see listed here what you need and it's from that 2020 year. Uh, in case of separation or divorce, which parent do I choose? I know this feels like one kind of sidebar to throw in there in the middle. Um, this, this question comes up a lot and it's pretty confusing when you get down to separate households with parents in two different households. Um, so when you're wondering which parent do I use on my FAFSA, I put the bottom thing first, which I keep talking from the bottom up. It's not about which parent claims you on your taxes. So just remember that's really not brought into the mix. But what it is, is which parent have I lived with the most in the last 12 months from the date you put that FAFSA in? So that's the first thing I marked. The second thing is if that parent that you've chosen has remarried and there's a step parent involved, yes, that step parent information does need to be included. And then lastly, if you feel like there's kind of a 50-50, you can't really decide which parent because uh, we're evenly divided between households and they, they ask you to go back and say which parent provided the most financial support in the last 12 years. And again, the last thing is it's not about um, which parent uh, in a decision through divorce or other agreements is uh, claiming that student on their taxes. All right, next. Um, there's a lot of information changing on us and in this climate, uh, the pandemic, all the things that are going on, and you know I mentioned we use that 2020 tax year. A lot of things could have changed for your house though when you start going back a couple of years on your financial information. And so you do want to start with that year and that information on your FAFSA, but I did want to bring up FAFSA reevaluation. This is where you will follow back up with a financial aid office of the school that you choose to move forward with that you know that you're going to attend. You make sure you complete that FAFSA and you can choose multiple schools until that you decide which one you really know that you're heading to. But once you know for sure where you're heading, if you see these certain special circumstances that could have changed things for your family, I encourage you to talk to that financial aid office about a FAFSA reevaluation, meaning you've already put the bases in and you're going to have a conversation with that office about what has changed and they may have a, a little bit extra paperwork for you to complete, but the whole goal is to give you that best award overview that you're eligible for based off your real situation. 
So remember, use what you have to begin with and follow up with that financial aid office if you have special circumstances. All right, the different things that you can expect to hear back from that FAFSA, oop, went too far. Oop, there we go, sorry. <laughs> grants, we don't wanna skip over grants because that's the best part. Um, I get the question a lot, how do I make sure I get a grant or what do we do to apply for grants? Remember the FAFSA is your application for federal aid and grants are included in that, so you can't really do something special or something extra to make it happen. Um, that information is out there based off the calculation of the data that you put in. Uh, grants are need-based funds typically, um, and so if you're eligible, you will hear back from that FAFSA package that you received it. So just know that it's all calculated on the federal government side, but there's nothing special you have to do. You just make sure to provide accurate information. And again, reevaluation could be something on the grant side of things where the picture you put in may be a student that's not grant eligible, but when you follow up and say, our story has changed, you may in fact actually still be grant eligible after a reeval. Uh, currently, I included that we don't have the next year for what your grant award could be for the 22-23 year, but this year's 21-22 full Pell Grant award is 6,495 that gets divided between fall and spring semesters. Uh, so you can have no grant, you can have full grant, or you can even have partial grant based off those calculated numbers. All right, work study, briefly I wanna mention it because it is a question on that FAFSA. So um, if your student's interested in having a campus student worker position, um, if you can be awarded this work study, meaning you have some level of need, you said yes on the FAFSA question, even if you don't know yet, just say yes. Get that FAFSA in early because these funds typically run out. Uh, your student can usually have a student worker position whether they receive this award or not. Um, but because these funds come from the federal government for folks who did receive the award, they are very popular on campus if they got this award. So mark yes on the FAFSA, even if they don't know yet. Um, when they get to the campus that they're headed to, if they do believe they still wanna move forward with a campus position, um, it's a win-win because they get work experience, they get a paycheck, and the campus offices actually have an excellent worker and my student workers from my office, I write, re I write recommendations all the time for the time they worked in our office and moved on out into the world, and they were excellent uh, employees that we had in our office. So please just say yes. All right, this is a big one. Just take a picture, because there's lots of stuff to say about loans, but I do have to talk about it briefly for you. Um, I do get the question a lot, what's the difference in your subsidized and your unsubsidized? Basically, your subloan is all about need. You have to have some need calculated. Your unsub is not anything to do with need, so you may see some differences out there. Essentially, when you're saying yes or not saying yes to these student loans that are offered, if you have a choice to choose, that's subsidized. If you notice, I mentioned in the middle that the government actually handles the interest for you as long as you're half-time in school but the unsubsidized does actually have interest that can accrue once you accept that portion. And then um, if you do say yes to those student loans that are offered to you from the school that you've chosen, there's usually a couple of extra steps and that's that second part at the bottom. Uh, you'll go back online to studentaid.gov and do a couple of extra steps as an accepted person. So remember that you've seen the loans, if you said yes to the loans, and they're sitting there not paying on that student account, you may have a couple of extra things to do on the government side to make it happen. Scholarships, this is our favorite, and this can be the very huge difference between uh, what you're receiving from your federal student aid package, what the cost of the school may be, and what makes the difference on what can uh, help you afford one school over the other. The uh, typical thing, there's a lot of small print there, so sorry for that, but it kind of is going along with the idea that your application for admission would be a, oftentimes also your application for those merit scholarships on the academic side. Obviously, if you're an athlete, you've got a different road that you're pursuing and you're gonna fulfill those requirements as well because of talent, and even other fine art type talents would probably have different things like they will speak with a department or present a portfolio, that type thing for scholarships um, on that form of talent. 
but just know you just want to be aware of what is the drill with the school that you choose and what you need to know about scholarships that are offered. Additionally, most schools have other scholarships through that campus website that you can apply for that even stack on top of the scholarships that you may already have heard um, on the merit side. So remember to ask about, okay, what goes on once I've applied? Am I just naturally awarded? Is there another application for additional scholarships? And then I included the second part for outside sources that I know Ms. Vickers and all the other fine counselors are gonna make sure you know about in your community and all around, but just some good pointers on what to pursue to um, think about them. And um, you also want to make sure that you apply every year. We get so focused on getting our, our freshmen off to college that you've got to remember to think about the second, third, and fourth year, and fifth year, or whatever it takes to get them through. The recap, my last slide. I just want to remind you that FAFSA opens October 1. There is no reason to wait, because remember, we did 2020 taxes. They're all ready to go. Um, do remember to apply for scholarships and ask about those scholarship, um, the procedure at that school, the deadlines, because typically those scholarship portals open in the fall. They close out like February, March, April, so that they can close down and award those scholarships to go along with what they may already be receiving. So you don't want to miss a deadline because that can be sad. And I want to throw in a little piggyback on that resume. The perfect other tool to have as you apply for these multiple scholarships is that resume because it already helped you keep up with your different, um, the different things you've been involved with. And when you fill out the application, if you use that resume, that's the perfect um, place to keep up with what you're going to mention in those applications. Um, we do say definitely check in with the financial aid office. We're really nice people and we're here to help. And, and um, it's just a procedure and a timeline that you got to get through, so we encourage you to follow up and check in. Definitely plan ahead and don't forget about books. Books are expensive and when you're, when you're figuring out the cost and you're looking at your student account, typically your books are a separate expense, so definitely pay attention to books. And along with a student email to set one up for applying, you're going to get a new student email when you get to the college or university of your choice. And from that time you've been accepted, you want to monitor that new email from your university. And that is it. So thank you so much. Ms. Miller, thank you again, and also Mrs. Smith from uh, the University of Montevallo. Uh, want to, uh, we really appreciate them. And I also want to say thank you to all of our college partners uh, and our career partners and military uh, partners who are here tonight. We've got, a, a, we've got quite a bit of representation here tonight. Uh, but before I get to that, again, I just want to thank um, uh, also Mrs. Young, uh, also, Mrs. Miles and, of course, Mrs. Vickers uh, for putting this uh, great program together tonight and for sharing the valuable information that they've, they've shared with you. And again, THS TV, uh, thank you for recording this and we'll be sharing that, this valuable information in a recorded and edited uh, video that will be coming out very, very soon to all of you uh, and those that could not make it tonight. I do want to make a special mention of Dr. Will Banks, Dr. Amanda Will Banks, who is here tonight, who is our uh, coordinator for secondary education and curriculum. Appreciate you for being here tonight. She works very closely with us uh, when it comes to our, our college and career endeavors and for our seniors uh, and all of our students uh, that, are, that are here. Uh, I also just want to say thank, thanks to our, uh, to our team uh, for making this a very special event. Our THS ambassadors are here tonight. So they're going to be able to help point you, uh, yeah, uh, and, and they are going to point you in the right direction uh, tonight because we've got a laundry list of, and some of you that don't have, if you don't have your guide yet, you can certainly pick one up in the front, that list where all of our college representatives are, our career representatives are, and also our military uh, uh, reps who are here tonight. Uh, you can pick that up in the front, but our THS ambassadors will also have those in the building, okay? Uh, but I know this was a lot of information, and I want to close with this. I know this was a lot of information, 
and we want you to certainly take all of this very seriously. Uh, but I also want to congratulate our seniors and our families for making it to this point. And this is such a special year. And so I want to remind everyone to soak all of this in and to just remember how, how special and how blessed this year is for everyone, for our seniors and for our families. Um, but have a little fun with this too because we certainly are blessed and you're going to be able to, to start with tonight uh, and to see all of these representatives that are here tonight, have some fun with this and really explore these opportunities for your seniors. Um, but know this too, that you are certainly in the best place with the best team and the best school, the best school system, our superintendent and our school board, all the way to our, our administration, our counselors and everyone. We work extremely hard to keep all of these things in place for everyone and these opportunities, these activities that we've talked about tonight. Everything that we do is for our students, for our seniors, for our parents and our families. So I just wanna, wanna let you know and reiterate to you can feel good about where you are in this school and this school system and the opportunities that we have made available by our leadership and our team. And so just remember that, and I want you to enjoy the night. 